Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for this LinkedIn live session, the biggest scraps in negotiation and how not to make them. I have with me a star of the negotiation world, Mark Raffan is the host of one of the best selling podcasts in the world, Negotiation Ninja. I also had the pleasure to be his guest some time ago. And uh, we will now, Mark, rather than being the interviewer, this time will be the interviewee. And, uh, but of course, you know, we will have a chat together and share a few ideas about negotiation. But, you know, before we go into the topic, I think, you know, we want to know a bit more about our audience, right? You know, Mark is joining us from North America. I'm joining you from Europe. Now the question is, uh, how about our audience? Where are you based? I mean... Uh, is uh, we're doing this event, by the way, at, you know, an unusual time, you know, nine o'clock uh, for Mark, five o'clock for me. And uh, let's see where uh, our audience is. I mean, are we still going to have somebody from Asia, even if it's late at night? Are we going to have uh, more people from Canada, North America or Europe? Let's see. Okay, Vlad is the first one. And... Uh, a regular passionate about negotiation that join us from Mannheim, Germany. Hello, perfect. Then we have also someone from France and then also from Tech. Okay, good to see you, Sahesh. And let's see, okay. And of course, we have also Regina. Uh, Okay, this is good as the session on the 27, then purchase your ticket. Well, okay, thank you very much, Regina, for posting this. You know, tomorrow we are doing, by the way, a webinar, and uh, all the revenues will be to promote uh, an uh, exciting project in Ukraine. So it's about giving uh, Easter cakes to the people in the Kiev area that were heavily touched in the last week. So like... Uh, Bush uh, Irpin. So tomorrow at two o'clock, I do have a webinar where uh, you can support uh, this initiative. Then, okay, we have uh, also my friends Olivier from Switzerland and uh, Janet from the US. So fantastic. We have uh, a, a nice variety of people uh, in uh, with us today. Now, let me ask a question to Mark, I mean, before we go into the negotiation topics, maybe can you tell us a bit more about yourself, Mark, so that uh, the, the audience that uh, does not yet know your podcast and uh, all your activity can discover some more about you? Uh, yes, absolutely. And thank you so much for having me, Giuseppe. It's a great pleasure to be here. For your audience that doesn't know me, my name is Mark. I own a company called Negotiations Ninja. We do training, coaching, and content. We also have um, one of the top negotiation podcasts in the world where we've interviewed Giuseppe, uh, likes of Giuseppe, as well as many other folks from hostage negotiators to suicide hotline negotiators to business negotiators, M&A, all that sort of stuff. And we have to review everyone in between. So in terms of a broad spectrum of negotiation professionals, we have them on the show. Um, and you can listen to that anywhere you listen to podcasts, Negotiations Ninja podcasts. Uh, we deliver training to procurement and sales teams um, all over the world from North America to Europe to Asia and Africa um, to some of the largest companies on the planet. Uh, many of them you know by name. Unfortunately, many of them I'm not allowed to say by name, but a few of them you will know. And um, yeah, I'm just happy to be here today. I'm happy to be here to share some knowledge, hopefully, with uh, your listeners, and hopefully they get a lot of value out of this. I want to try and drive as much value as I can for your listeners and your viewers as much as I can today. Okay, fantastic. And let me put... Uh the name of the podcast on uh, on the chat you know so that uh, the people that can search for it in whatever in uh, negotiations whatever ninja n-i-n-j perfect yeah that's one that's a correct one absolutely 
Okay, great. So, by the way, this is your LinkedIn Life event. You know, I do have a few questions for Mark, but you know, you may also have your own. So, feel free to ask any question that you may have. But you know, the topic of today, okay, biggest drop in negotiation. So, Mark, what are some of the biggest mistakes that people make in negotiations? Uh, I think it's it sounds old and it sounds like it's probably been done before but the truth of the matter is the vast majority of people lack preparation when it comes to negotiation preparation is the single most important thing that you can do in your negotiations and actually developing a good negotiation strategy is the single most important thing you can do and now there's going to be some detractors from that that'll say well you got to be able to move on your feet and you got to be able to stick and move and i would say yes absolutely all of that is true as well but you're not going to be able to be well enough prepared to be able to stick and move, to be able to have good tactics if you first haven't completed the appropriate planning and the appropriate preparation. And if we dive deeper into that later on, I'm, I'm happy to dive deeper into that. But I think the single biggest thing that most people miss is planning and preparation. Yeah. In fact, and of course, you know, if you have done a proper negotiation training, you certainly received some templates that you can use. And I think, you know, that's uh, some as a tool that you should have really close uh, to yourself. You also talked about developing a negotiation strategy, Mark. I mean, what kind of things, uh, how do you develop the strategy? What are the kind of key indicator that uh, will help you decide, you know, which way you take your strategy during a negotiation? Yeah, I think, Giuseppe, a lot of people need to first think about what they need and want going into the negotiation. And I know that sounds super selfish, but I think now is the important time to be selfish. What do you, as the negotiator, need and want in this negotiation? Because it's not good enough for us to say, well, I need a good deal. Hmm. What does that mean? That doesn't actually mean anything. So your job is to be very clear about what you need and want to be successful in that negotiation. And then quite equally, think about and forecast what you think the counterparties' needs and wants are going to be. And then ask them questions about what their needs and wants are and be clear about what your needs and wants are. And in the process, you'll be able to come to a mutually beneficial outcome. But first, it starts with what do you need and want? And what does the counterparty need and want? Yeah. And on my side, you know, a, a couple of things that I pay attention also when I look at the strategy, there is also the balance of power, right? Understanding uh, uh, who has more power into the negotiation will also help me understand uh, how, you know, how I'm going to approach it. And probably also the relationship element is also something that uh, will, uh, will be a key element of driving my strategy you know to say okay you know what uh, uh, how important is the relationship can this grow is this a long-term relationship is this a spot kind of activity and this is also probably another element that will be a key element uh, that will uh, help me decide you know how i will approach uh, this negotiation then of course you know there are plenty of other element dependency etc that will come into play and that you're gonna let's say analyze as part of your preparation but okay uh let's go back maybe to the topic that we have for today you know which is the biggest drop in negotiation so maybe let's get very personal mark i mean what is one mistake that you have made during a negotiation i've made a lot of mistakes in negotiation giuseppe i've made enough mistakes for all of our listeners combined uh, but i've been able to learn from those mistakes which has been great i think one of the biggest mistakes that i made early on in my career was letting my ego get the best of me in the negotiation and letting my ego drive the conversation because for me early on in my career it was all about securing that quote unquote win whatever that means and and being and feeling like i came out on top unfortunately what that did was my ego spoke for the negotiation not the rational side of the discussion and that unfortunately led to a lot of relationships being damaged 
and a, a, some deals not going the way they should have gone or going a lot longer than they should have gone. And so I think my ego probably drove a lot of that. And that was probably the biggest mistake that I made early on in my career. I mean, I still make mistakes to this day, but it's usually because I didn't think too deeply into the negotiation. Early on in my career it was mostly my ego driving the conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I think you know, it resonates also with me because and, and probably you know, it's something that is happening to a, long of the, a lot of the young people that uh, are joining us uh, today. And, uh, you know, beginning of my career, I was working with Procter & Gamble. You know, Procter & Gamble used to attract, you know, the ambitious, driven kind of people that wanted to make things happen and make a big career. Then, you know, you... You, you may ended up then focusing too much on yourself, not enough about what the other party needs and wants. Maybe you want to push it too quickly and you don't give enough time to the other party, maybe also to get the buy-in from their organization to do something different, you know? So that's, uh, that's indeed maybe uh, the kind of mistake that uh, may happen to a number of person as you begin uh, your career as a negotiator. And, uh, and maybe, you know, if we take maybe a bit of a broader perspective, um, can you share a story of a time when a team negotiation failed? Yeah, absolutely. And it, it has a lot to do with ego. Um, early on in my career, uh, I was negotiating one of the larger deals that I had earlier on. It was in the hundreds of millions of dollars. And uh, we were about six or seven months into the negotiation. And we were at that point, arguing over minutia in the deal. We had gotten stuck in very small pieces of the deal that in the grand scheme of things didn't really matter all that much. And so the counterparty and I were butting heads quite a bit. And that was a direct result of both of our egos. We were letting both of our egos control the negotiation. So we had to take a step back from that in order to salvage that negotiation because what it ended up happening is that the relationship was starting to get tense and the relationship was starting to get damaged and both of fortunately both of us recognized that in the negotiation we took a step back we decided on how we were going to reapproach things and then we reapproach things now that we had taken that time to have that sort of 30,000 foot level view of what we were planning on doing we realized that the minutia that we were arguing over the small things that we were arguing over didn't matter in the grand scheme of the relationship and in the grand scheme of the deal and we were able to come to uh, a resolution a lot faster as a result of recognizing that but that that deal almost cost us a lot of money. Um, it almost was very, very costly for both businesses. Fortunately enough, it didn't, that we were able to salvage the negotiation and, and do quite well for both sides. But it, it would have gone very poorly if we hadn't. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and not always uh, is possible, right, to rescue this kind of situation. Because when people get emotionally involved, when they want to win, when the ego comes into it, like you were mentioning before, then even, uh, you know, it takes, uh, you know, the ability to step back, ideally from both sides, to be able that uh, indeed, you know, there is something bigger that you're going for. And... Uh, and that's no easy, right? You know, I have also a number of story also in terms of uh, personal negotiation, you know, divorce kind of situation where then, you know, the battle gets so big between the partners that uh, you ended up discussing on minor matters and losing, you know, you know, the bigger picture, you know, the children or whatever other kind of things that uh, may be more important. Now, uh, when thinking about the team negotiation kind of situation, I was thinking about uh, a problem of alignment on my side, right? You know, working for the first time with some engineering colleagues from uh, another business unit. I was representing the procurement team. I sent the negotiation uh, preparation document to my colleagues, got no reply. Uh, try to set up a call in order to align before the negotiation. They were too busy. We said, okay, let's meet before the negotiation so that we have one hour together to plan them. They arrived late. 
and then you know when we start when they arrived the supplier was already in the in the reception and uh, we came up all together with no alignment and uh, after a few minutes of discussion then my engineering colleague started saying uh, to the supplier you know we have a budget of 12 million for this project we have chosen your technology. Now let's work together to make sure that we are really going to optimize it. Right? Classic. You know, then you say, oh, no. Yeah, classic. <laughs> classic. But this happens to procurement all the time. Exactly, right? You know, and then, you know, a, a number of the situations happen also, you know, with IT colleagues, or with uh, HR colleagues, etc. So, yes, that's... Uh, a typical team negotiation that doesn't work so well. But, and by the way, uh, do you have a story also to share regarding an internal negotiation? Because yeah, you know, we, often, we often talk about external, but you know, a lot really happens inside the organization. My stories are similar in that um, alignment is key. And by the way, alignment's just another term for negotiation, really, because that's what we're doing internally. We're negotiating with our internal counterparts, our internal colleagues, to ensure that we are all aligned on the strategy. And if, uh, to your point, Giuseppe, if you go into the negotiation in a team-based negotiation and you are not aligned to the strategy, that's when bad things happen like your example. And this happens to procurement all the time. They say, you know, they're going into the negotiation, they haven't prepared or planned with their internal stakeholders. Their stakeholders say something in the negotiation that immediately reduces leverage in that negotiation. And now you're like, well, there's nothing left for us to do here, really. We've told the counterparty that we've selected them. At this point in time, we're just inking a contract. Um, and many of the, the issues that we have internally, including the issues that I've had internally, result in our inability and my inability in the past to ensure that there is internal team alignment. And this happens in all parts of the business, even in sales, right? When you bring in a technical representative into a sales conversation and that technical representative says something that they shouldn't say. And by the way, that's not their fault. It's our fault as the negotiators for not prepping them ahead of time and not making sure that they understand what their role is, what their responsibility is, what they should say, what they shouldn't say, making sure they understand what we're trying to achieve. All of that becomes incredibly important prior to going into the negotiation. And without that internal alignment, we always get ourselves into trouble because we haven't created the alignment that we require to have a successful negotiation. And so many of the internal mistakes that I've made in my past and that many people continue to make is by not getting that internal preparation done. And so I would suggest to your listeners and your viewers who are watching, make sure that you plan well ahead and go to the person's desk if you need to go to the person's desk. Meet for coffee if you need to meet for coffee. Set up time, call them, pester them, make sure that you are ready because without that preparation, you're opening yourself up to a weakness. And a good negotiator on the other side of the table is gonna be able to identify that there's not alignment and separate you two in the negotiation. Yeah. And by the way, this internal alignment is even more challenging during the times that we went through of COVID, right? You know, when you're not collocated, you're not going to count on the fact that you can have a chat at the coffee machine that you can bump into people's office. You know, in some of the countries, this is uh, over, but in some other countries in the world, there are still restrictions and you're still, so, you know, if you do have a situation where you are not in the office on a regular basis, then plan even more in advance because maybe the person that you need to talk, they need to align with their own bosses, et cetera. So, you know, it's going to take a, a bit of a longer time to make it happen. By the way, another thing that uh, I recommend to the people that uh, are uh, doing a lot of team negotiation is uh, clarify the roles, mm. clarify the roles up front, right? You know, you're going to say, okay, Technical, commercial, good guy, bad guy, uh, decision maker, uh, lead negotiator, uh, body language observer, note taker, uh, number cruncher. Let's say there are plenty of roles that you can assign to people. And it's also more motivating to the other member if they know they have a specific role that then tell them, you shut up because I'm going to do everything. You know, that's uh, that may not... Uh, 
feel very good for the person uh, on uh, the other side. Now, uh, if you do have some question for us, the audience, you know, please, you can raise your question. In the meantime, I want to say a few words about some of the forthcoming events. So just, you know, if you have an interest uh, in negotiation, I do have a webinar to tomorrow about uh, dealing with difficult people tomorrow at uh, 2 p.m. Uh, Central European time, and all the revenues from the webinar will go to a project to provide 50,000 50, Easter cakes in the Kiev area, Buka, Irpin, and all the cities that were touched. So we are helping an entrepreneur in uh, Ukraine to make this uh, great project, and this will be a great way for you to support it. Then, you know, if you say, listen, I have no money to spend, then, you know, we still have a couple of free events for you. We have a couple of free events for you. So next week, I am, uh, I have a webinar. I have a webinar on the 28th of April at 12.30 uh, Central European Times, techniques to be more persuasive. So you're going to find uh, the webinar, the link to the webinar, techniques to be more persuasive, that will take place next week on the 28th of April. And the week after, on the 3rd of May, the week after 3rd of May, um, I will be, have, I have another distinguished guest like Mark. This time it will be Dr. Branka Zai and uh, how to use your voice to be more convincing and persuasive. Branka Zai is a leading expert in Europe on how to use your voice, so you may learn some very interesting techniques on how your voice can make you more persuasive. So, 3rd of May, 1 o'clock Central European time. And, by the way, if you're really serious about upgrading your skills, then we have a masterclass in Geneva, so a classroom masterclass with... Uh, the leading professor at the University of Oxford, Owen Derbyshire, the academic director of the, of the Oxford Program in Negotiation. So Owen and I will be running a masterclass on influence and persuasion in Geneva, the 15 and 16 of June. Is in Geneva, Geneva Airport, so it can easily be reached by plane or by train, it's just in front of the train station and the airport. And the price of this masterclass is uh, 3,000 Swiss francs for two days of masterclass plus uh, uh, two years of remote learning. But we have an early bird rebate going on. So if you sign up uh, in the next three weeks, then rather than paying 3,000, you will only pay 2,400 Swiss francs. So that's uh, another opportunity. We're going to put the links uh, uh, to the webinar, to the LinkedIn Live, uh, and to the event uh, in the chat. So if you're interested, you know, feel free to connect with us. Now, we do have a question from Regina. So let's take a question from Regina. Alignment can be well picked up in the body language and how the eye contact aligns with all players. Mm, interesting. By the way, Regina is a sales vice president. We negotiated a very large deal over 20 years ago, right? And uh, we still remain friends. And uh, it was a pleasure to negotiate with Rekina so we can see the expertise, right? On uh, looking at the body language. By the way, if you're negotiating remotely, then uh, people tend to be more conservative because you don't see the body language, nor even the one of your team members. So this makes us more risk adverse. So when we are negotiating remotely, we are more risk adverse because we are not really sure what our counterpart, what our colleagues thinks about what is going on. So, you know, maybe one of the things that you can do in order to mitigate this type of effect when you cannot get the body language of your counterpart and your team members, maybe with your team members, you can have your private chat. You can exchange messages on WhatsApp, Telegram, or whatever, so that you ensure that you stay aligned with the people. Or, of course, you know, the things that you can do is call for a break. You call for a coffee break, you put yourself into separate breakout rooms, and this gives you the opportunity to uh, realign with your team members and see that, uh, indeed, you, know, you are uh, 
on, uh, on the same page or not. Let's get another passionate about negotiation, Vlad. The ego is a big problem for many negotiators. What techniques do you use to fight your ego? It's an excellent question, Vlad. Um, and I think it's a problem that plagues a lot of us, especially for those of us that are very competitive. Um, I feel like it, it's something that pops up a lot. What's helped me, as weird as it sounds, is meditation. Meditation has helped me a lot. And just a mindfulness practice has helped me out a ton because it helps me to know when I'm getting too emotional in the negotiation. And that practice of meditation and being in the moment and observation of my own emotions has helped me to notice when my ego starts to take over more than my sort of rational frontal cortex brain, right? Like that's that's helped me out a ton in, in my negotiations. I would highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Vlad, in tomorrow's webinar about dealing with difficult people, then we will also work a lot, you know, about, you know, those emotional elements. Say, okay, you know, when you get carried away by your emotion, when, uh, what can you do to make sure that, uh, you know, you don't uh, make an instinctive reaction and you make mistakes? We will also be doing some emotional intelligence exercise during tomorrow's webinar to see, okay, how maybe you can also start recognizing your body sign that can be early indicator that you're getting out of control and that maybe there is something that you can do to bring the things back in uh, on track. Good. Now, to conclude, Mark, on, uh, on, on this uh, LinkedIn Life event, what would you suggest to our audience to prevent the negotiation screw up? plan and prepare as much as you can uh you're always there's always going to be something that you miss right so and i feel like the knowledge of that is really important like recognize that you're you're probably missing something and that kind of humility going into the negotiation is really really important and it's really important to your planning just because you've done this for a long time, which is where many of us are, right? Like if you've done this for a long time, sometimes we fall into the trap of like, well, I've done this so much. I kind of know what to do, right? Like it's old for me. I, I know it. That's a very dangerous place to be in because when we convince ourselves that we, this is old to us and we know it and it's all that we do and every day we do this every day, then we start to put ourselves into a situation where we don't plan. So just plan and prepare as much as you can going into the negotiation. I think that's the single biggest thing that you can do going into your negotiations in order to be successful. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, maybe uh, let me build on uh, on this idea from, uh, from Mark, maybe giving a, a, a different spin. And I'm going to quote General Eisenhower. Uh, general Zanari became president of the US, but uh, before he was a general, of course. And uh, talking about, you know, his, uh, his, 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 his war experience, he mentioning plans are useless, planning is everything. Hmm. So, I mean, we are not recommending that you have an exact plan in a negotiation, which is number one i'm going to do this they're going to reply this and we are going to do this and they're going to reply this etc cetera, etc cetera, because you know that doesn't happen you know neither in war nor in negotiation the things exactly happen the way you had anticipated but planning is everything you know once you have understood you know the interest and priority of the different parties you know the alternatives you know the question that you're going to ask the argument that you're going to use some creative solution and all those kind of things then uh, you will be able also to be flexible to adapt so you will be well prepared you know to deal also with the unexpected because you know you cannot anticipate everything but once you know the territory well then you will be in a fantastic position to do this uh, well. With this, I would like to thank you for uh, your question, for your participation in this webinar, and a big thank to Mark for uh, joining us today and sharing his wisdom and knowledge with us during today's session. And to all our participants, or the ones that are gonna listen to our recording, I look forward to continue the learning journey with you, webinar tomorrow, 
uh, webinar next week, LinkedIn Live the week after, or the masterclass in June. Plenty of opportunity to continue to stay in touch. Mark, and uh, let's remind that Mark is the host of an amazing podcast, Negotiations Ninja. So, you know, if you, on your drive home, you want to continue to strengthen your negotiation, do not miss the opportunity to listen to Negotiation Ninja and get some great content from Mark. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Me. Thank you, Mark. All the very best. Bye-bye.